Victoria, I think I was like nine, and I don't remember much. But driving in yesterday afternoon, the wind was blowing, and I thought that as long as it's not snowing, I, I don't mind a little bit of wind, but I understand that even um, the wind that you all got yesterday was pretty intense. So that welcomed, welcomed me in weather-wise into, uh, into Vancouver and into Canada. And I remember thinking that the wind blows like this at Bandon Dunes quite a bit, and so I kind of felt at home there. Um, and then the weather is pretty similar to what we have at Bandon Dunes. But what I was so impressed by and what made me feel really like I was in a cool place is the city of Vancouver. I didn't really have a chance to get around a whole lot, but um, I mean, in terms of comparing it to Bandon, it's like New York City up here, but the people are a lot nicer than they are in, in New York City. <laughs> so it was really nice to get in here yesterday afternoon and everyone has been so nice to me so far and I uh, really appreciate the opportunity that Donald gave us to come up and when he asked if we'd be interested, it was like, it took me about two seconds to to come to a decision. I knew that I wanted to come support your efforts and um, knowing that a lot of you have been to Bandon Dunes before, it uh, was important to me to um, sort of give back and support uh, the, the seminar that you all have today. So thank you, Donald, for having me and um, I'm looking forward to being here. So what I wanted to do is is kind of talk through what Bandon Dunes does from a PR and marketing standpoint. Um, a lot of what we do is probably similar to what you do. Maybe some of what we do is something that, that you can take away and apply to your business, whether that is as an operator, a golf course operator, or maybe if you're a, an instructional teacher, you can take that and apply it to your own personal business that way. Um, but what I want to do is just give you kind of a, an idea of what we do to, um, to promote Bandon Dunes, and then also uh, what we do to, um, uh, to make sure that we exceed that expectation that we've set with guests once they arrive. So, So the question then becomes, how do we aim for success? So step one is to set the guest expectation. So that's what my department does. We build ads through our ad agency. We run marketing campaigns. We have a social media uh, presence through Facebook and Twitter. We basically communicate a message uh, out there to the public about what you can expect if you, if you come to Bandon Dunes. And actually, before I move on, I wanted to get a show of hands of who all has been to Bandon Dunes before. Wow, very cool. That's like over half the room, very impressive. Well, if you've been there, you know that it's A, hard to get to, takes a while to get there, and there's no big airport that you can fly in uh, and, and, and cut down on travel time. Everyone who comes there has to really go through a lot to get there. But when you, when you arrive on site, hopefully you felt that it's a, it's a truly unique experience. I mean, I grew up in Portland, and I've been traveling around the country a lot in my, in my previous time with the Golf Channel. I was able to do that a lot. And you sort of get a sense for what North American golf is like. It's, it's tree-lined, it's very classic, and there's a lot of older golf courses, but not nearly as old as the, as the golf courses that are over in the United Kingdom and in Europe. That really, I mean, we all know that that's where golf started. And that's what Bandon Dunes is, is it's a very, uh, it's a linksy style, old school, um, back over in the Scotland and Ireland type of genre, type of golf course. And so it's a truly unique experience going. So. Uh, so step one is for me and my department to communicate that out and set the guest expectations so that they know if they come to Bandon Dunes, they have an idea of what they're going to get. Step two is then once they arrive, we have to exceed that expectation. So my job is to tell people how awesome it is, and then there's another group that when they show up, our guest services department mainly, they exceed that expectation. My job is easier and more fun than the guest services department, but I think that what I want to communicate is that it's really important to set an expectation and then exceed that expectation. That's something that we uh, are, feel very strongly about. So before I jump into the specifics, I wanted to show a quick four minute video, I think is how long it is. And this is an internal video, so if we're recording this, don't distribute it on social media or whatever. But um, kidding aside, it's, it's a video that was uh, produced by my department and it was shown at our company year end party and the party, it's not a Christmas party or a holiday party. It's really a party to celebrate the end of our peak season. So our peak season, similar to a lot of you all, I, I would imagine, is like in that May to the end of October timeframe. And so all of the employees that made it through from May 1st to October 31st, that were committed and locked into peak season, uh, the party is meant to really honor them. I didn't fit in that group because I didn't start at Band Dudes until the end of June. But this video hopefully encapsulates what Band and Dunes is, kind of a look behind the curtain of who we are. So Matt, if we can cue that video up. The party is called the Survivor Party because you've survived peak season. So it's kind of a play on that. Do we have audio by chance?
Bear with us just one minute. It's probably my fault somehow. Do you know, maybe it's the mic. Did I turn that off? Sorry, bear with us. Thanks, guys.
scary. Switch back to the PowerPoint. I'll take it. Thanks, man. There we go. Okay. So step one for us, like I said, my job is to set the expectation to the guests. So that we do that through PR and marketing, basically painting a great picture of, of who we are. An accurate picture, obviously, but also one that we think people are going to be very impressed by. So the first way that we do that is through relationships with media members. So one of the most important parts of my job is to build relationships. And those are external relationships with uh, members of the media. So Golf Digest, Golf Magazine, Lynx Magazine, um, those are some of the bigger ones. The Golf Channel, obviously. Um, but then also local media as well, and I think this might apply to, to you all, um, is that your, your relationship with, with local and regional media is something that's very, very important. And another, way, another thing that I have to think about is advertising. We, we're lucky to have an ad agency that does all the creative uh, and, and uh, ad buying for us, but I work with them, talk to them every week about what we're doing, how's it going, things like that. And then the third thing, and this is something that you, that you all know is, is growing rapidly, and that's social media. So our presence on Facebook and Twitter is something that I manage and something that we have to, to monitor closely. And then the, the step two is to exceed expectations. Um, that's usually done through our guest services department. Donald was nice enough to invite our director of guest services, Mark Bergman, uh, to speak as well on behalf of, of his group, but unfortunately he had a conflict and couldn't make it. And so, um, but I think that that's incredibly important to the success of our business, and so it's vital that that I talk about it with you all today and share what we do from that perspective. And those are really to create and nurture a culture of guest service. So I think it's important for us all to understand that we work in the golf industry, which is a service industry. And so we're not behind the curtain all the time, not in front of our customers. A lot of, uh, if not all of your employees are probably customer facing individuals. And so it's important that we understand and take that seriously. The other thing that Mark's group is, is really big on is a training program so that uh, when, pe when people start and, and folks start to get into their job, they know exactly what they're being asked to do. And then the third thing um, is also really important and something that I think is really awesome, actually, the way we do it, and I'm happy to share with what we do, is our guest feedback system. So let's start with PR and marketing. What do I do to build relationships with media? I put a lot of effort, as I mentioned, into pursuing positive relationships with media. And this is, sorry, it's a long bullet, but um, this is something that, that uh, I take very seriously. If I notice a piece of content that's produced about Bannon Dunes, and maybe it's not all about Bannon Dunes, but it's mentioned as part of a, a destination story about golf in Oregon, for example. Um, if you can notice that and then thank that person for giving you that exposure, I know I used to sit on the other side of the table. I used to be a content producer. I was the travel editor for GolfChannel.com. And when I got phone calls from operators or uh, just people out in the golf business that would thank me for what I had just done. It's not that I need a pat on the back all the time, but it just showed me that they were paying attention. And so that meant a lot to me. And so I try to reciprocate now that I'm sitting on the other side of the table. The other thing that a lot of golf writers or TV people need is help telling the story. You know more than anything about your business probably than, than anyone. And so media members, while they might claim to, to, to say they know a lot, they don't know everything about you. And so if you can do something to kind of tee it up, no pun intended, uh, and, and put the story right in front of them so that they know what to say about your property, <coughs> that really helps. And I know once again, sitting on the other side of the table, that helped me a lot. If, if the, the, my, my predecessor, the person that was in my, my position before, if he called me when I was at the Golf Channel and said, Eric, we've got a new golf course opening and you should come out for the opening. I would be like, wow, cool, didn't know that. Or if it's a smaller thing like, we're coming up on our five-year anniversary of something or we're donating X number of dollars to something, 
it doesn't always have to be a, an earth shattering course opening type of event. If it's just a little thing, uh, it helps me as a, as a content producer, as a writer, uh, it helps me understand better what I can do about it to, and what I can say about your property. So that's what I think about from a relationships with media members perspective. So when I thought about what I should say about advertising and social media, I thought a lot of what I say is stuff you probably know and stuff that you could apply to your business. But I would imagine there's some things that you do that maybe I'm not aware of that we do or we've talked about doing in the past. So what I wanted to do is make this segment of the presentation a little bit more discussion, conversational, ask you what you do, and then I can tell you how we would position that channel. So for example, like Facebook or uh, your website or local print ads or supporting your local high school yearbook. I mean, something, the little stuff like that. So if it's okay, I wanna set up a little whiteboard and we'll write everything that you all do to promote your business, to set that expectation with guests, then I can go through and talk to you about what Bannon Dunes does to be successful in that regard. Cool, so let me set this up real quick. So while I'm doing this, think about what are the things that you do to set that expectation, to promote your business. Thanks, man. All right. So I'm just going to write my own. I assume that you all do this, and if you don't, you should. The first is Facebook. Okay, that's a big one. What are some other things you do from a marketing PR standpoint? Like local ads in a newspaper, local TV ads, radio ads, Twitter, newsletters? Perfect. Emails, awesome, huge. That might also be newsletters, but yeah, those can be different as well. What else? You all use Twitter for your business? Okay, Twitter. I've seen a lot of, a lot of golf instructors use Twitter to promote their own business, but a lot of golf courses use it too. But I can tell you why, kind of the pros and cons of Twitter if you want. What about uh, local TV or local radio? Does anyone do that? Okay, local TV, local radio. I'm just gonna put TV and radio in the same little category. What a, sorry? Media outings, awesome. Okay, trade shows. I'm going to one next week. There was one here just now, wasn't there, recently? Did anyone go to the PGA show in Orlando a couple weeks ago? Anyone? Okay, anyways, that's something that we go. That's not a consumer show, but trade shows for consumers. Those are big. Anything else? A lot of stuff that you don't want other people to know about in the room, maybe? <laughs> Anything else? What about like stuff more from like a PR standpoint? So like supporting your, high, your local high school golf team by giving them free access to the driving range on Tuesday mornings. I used to do that. I see a couple of nods of the head. Okay. That's more of a PR move than a, than a measurable advertising move. Um, but that's something that, that uh, a lot of golf courses and certainly we get involved in. Supporting, I'll just put it market as supporting the local community or PR. I'll just say local PR to keep it brief. As you can probably tell, I type, I don't write a lot, so my handwriting is not good. Um, anything else before I jump into these items? Anything else? And if you think of something along, you have something? I'm just marketing your brand, your golf course uh, on your personality staff. Through your staff. Through your staff. Through your staff. I like that. So that's kind of like a word of mouth element, I would think, which word of mouth is huge to us. That's really important to us. Okay, so what I wanted to do, if you can read this stuff, is to walk you through what Bannon Dunes does in each of these elements, or doesn't do. I mean, everything that you do from a marketing perspective has pros and cons. Some of the pros and cons are really obvious, like it costs a lot maybe is one of the, the cons, but the pros is that you're reaching a big segment of golfers. Um, but so I'll walk you through what we do in each of these. And then if you have questions or comments along the way that you want to add, feel free to chime in at any time. 
So to start with Facebook, Facebook isn't the biggest thing we do, but it's the most important new thing that's going on. And what we're doing with Facebook is essentially reacting to the changing uh, uh, levels that people consume information, right? I mean, Facebook five years ago was not that big a deal. And 10 years ago, I think it just passed its 10 year anniversary. So like 10 years and two weeks ago, it didn't even exist. I mean, talk about a crazy, rapidly growing segment of media. That I don't think, that, I mean, you all probably are on Facebook. Can I get a show of hands of people who are on Facebook in the room, whether personally or for your business? Okay, pretty much everybody. That thing didn't exist 10 years ago, which is kind of mind boggling to think about. And so it's growing rapidly, but there's some pitfalls and some things, some mistakes that, that uh, I know we, I saw us make at the Golf Channel, which over posting and things like that. But um, there's things that can, can be a pitfall, but there's also enormous benefit. So some of the big things that, that we really focus on is, is engagement. So causing our followers, the people who have liked us, to like a, a photo or answer a question or play a little bit of a game. We just started doing a little, um, like where we zoom in really close on a photo uh, at Bannon Dunes. Like, it, like all you can see is the bunker basically and then asking users to guess which hole that is. And so if you've played the course, you may be able to guess, you may not, but getting into that level of engagement is one of the things that is really important to us. Another great thing about Facebook is that it's measurable. You know how many likers you have. So you know how many people have said, you know what, Riverway Golf Course, for example, I, I like that place. You know exactly how many that is, whereas some other uh, modes of advertising, you don't really know who's seeing the ad or who's responding to the ad. Any other things on Facebook? Yeah. Your website, yeah. Thank you. We're actually going through a redesign ourselves right now. Thanks for adding that. So, I, 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 oh, you have something to add? With, uh, something like Facebook, is that used as a one-way communication method, or are you taking feedback from Oh, no, that, it's totally two-way. I mean, people will comment. One of the, the positives and negatives of Facebook is that people can engage in it, and they can respond, and they can tell you what they really think. And so you have to be ready. Uh, if you pose a controversial question, like we, we had an idea one time to post, uh, which is, what was it? I think it was, which is your least favorite hole? That was a bad idea. Because it started with people saying, like, well, yeah, I really hate 14 at trails. And in fact, thanks for reminding me, we're not even gonna play it this time. Or something like that. So you gotta be careful, because if you ask a question that could cause people to go nuts, it spreads like wildfire. So while that is also a really good thing, that things spreading like wildfire, if it's a positive message, that's really good for your business. You also have to be careful about what it could do from a negative perspective. A few of you mentioned Twitter. That's another really rapidly growing uh, segment of, of social media and marketing, really. Um, it's one of those things that we're, we're involved with it. I wouldn't, if you were to prioritize Facebook and Twitter, I would prioritize Facebook, I think is, is easier to manage and, and more impactful than Twitter can be. Twitter is very rapid, it's very quick. You need to have an audience for it to, to have an impact. So if you only have a few hundred followers or something, it might be more worth your time to spend uh, developing your Facebook page or another marketing um, elements. The, the, thing, the other thing about Facebook that we've all seen, uh, you make a typo or you say something that maybe you shouldn't have said. Once it's out there, it's sort of out there and it's gone and, and you have no choice. And we've all seen celebrities make silly mistakes and things like that. But everyone can do it, obviously. Maybe it's just on a smaller level than, than some of the, the celebrity gaffes that have been made. But it's another one of those things that you've got to be careful of the, the message that you're putting out there. What about print ads? Who does a print ads like in local newspaper? Any, any print ads? Print is declining as Facebook gets bigger. So print ads are still a big part of what we do. And uh, we buy advertising in Golf Digest and Golf Magazine. Lynx Magazine are probably the three biggest places that we buy it. We don't do a lot of regional or local advertising, just not for any really specific reason other than uh, we think there's more impact on a national level and international level. level. But print ads, I think, one of the great things about print ads is they can look really nice. If you have a really beautiful hole or a beautiful facility, you can take a picture of it and send that out and, and it looks really nice in print. Um, one of the other, I think, benefits is that it reaches an older demographic. Facebook and Twitter, I think, as, as quickly as that's growing, uh, a lot of the people who are using those, those media channels are younger people. I think we all know that. And so print is a good way to still reach 
that older demographic. I'm not going to say old demographic, yeah. an older than Facebook and Twitter type of demographic. And let's all be honest, an older demographic has more discretionary income, uh, a, lot, a lot more of them play golf, a lot higher percentage of them play golf. So that's one thing that print does that we, that, that we take a look at and, and see benefit in is that it reaches an older demo. The, one of the other drawbacks to print that I think that this would resonate with you is you want to get return on investment when you buy something, especially print can get a little expensive. So if you want to get involved with print advertising um, and you're going to spend a lot of money, one of the drawbacks can be it's tough to measure. So if you don't have a really unique deal with or something that you're promoting within that advertisement, you don't know exactly how many people saw that ad. Wherever you bought it, uh, let's let's just say it's what's what's like a local print, uh, like a golf publication here locally. Is like a British Columbia PGA section magazine or something? Inside Golf Magazine. Okay. If you ask Inside Golf Magazine, they give you a rate of X number of dollars for an ad. They're going to tell you how many people uh, subscribe to it and how many people it's going to, which is an exaggeration. It's probably not quite true. Uh, but give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's going to go to. 500,000 people or something, just to use a round number. Well, how do you know how many people actually read that month's magazine? I know we all have magazines that for whatever reason we don't get to during that month or we don't flip through every single page. It's tough to know how many people actually read the magazine. And then going another la layer deeper, how many people actually saw my ad? Okay, and then another layer deeper than that, how about how many people saw my ad and said, wow, that looks interesting, I like that. You can't measure any of those metrics. So that's one of the drawbacks to print that can be a little bit tougher to swallow. Um, and that's one thing why Facebook is becoming so big. Facebook gives you answers to all of those questions. If you run advertising on Facebook, you know how many people saw it, you know how much it costs, you know how many people responded to it, you know how many people clicked on the link back to your website. Um, so there's, there's measurable little benefits to Facebook that print um, doesn't necessarily give you. So just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, I'm running all over the place. Okay. Emails and newsletters, that's something that we still do. One of the things about email and newsletters that I think uh, a mistake that I've seen made uh, by local golf courses is to over, over communicate. You lose credibility when you over communicate and if you lose credibility, maybe you're gonna lose a customer. So we really make it a point to not over communicate via email. We send one a month maybe and it's only when we feel like we have something impactful to say that people are gonna respond to. So that's how we treat emails and newsletters. Trade shows. I'm going to be at the Portland Golf. I'm going to be at the Portland Golf Show tomorrow. Excuse me. I just lost my battery. I'm going to be at the Portland Golf Show tomorrow, or sorry, next week. And we go to that to support the local, like Oregon golf community, because in the off season, um, the business that we get from Oregon is is a, a bigger percentage of our total business than it is in the peak season when we get a lot more national business. Okay, so trade shows are are definitely important. Media outings. That's a really good one. I used to go on a lot of those actually, where like a, a convention visitors bureau or a tourism organization will set up a group of writers to come play like a trail of golf courses in a community. I think that those are really impactful. And so that once again goes back to helping writers understand what you're about and who you are. If you, can, if you have a group of five or six writers visiting and you can tell them, hey, these are three things that we've got coming up this year that are new or three reasons why we think people would want to come play golf here. Telling that story to a group of writers like in a, in a media outing setting can be really valuable. TV and radio, we don't do either of those things. Um, you can't do it all. TV and radio are both uh, pretty expensive and it goes back to similar to print, it's hard to measure. So if you do a radio ad, how many people heard it? The radio station is gonna tell you how many people listen through Nielsen ratings and things like that, but those aren't 100% accurate and uh, by and large, you're not gonna be able to measure the investment you made in that. Not to say it's bad. Yeah, obviously, we all watch TV. I, I would assume everyone in this room watches TV. So it's a great way to get yourself out there and be in front of people, but there are negatives to it as well. Local PR. That's something that's very, very important to Bandon News, supporting our local community. Our owner and founder, Mike Kaiser, is a businessman out of Chicago. And uh, if you've ever met him, um, he is one of the most impressive people I've ever met from a relationships with your community perspective. He cares deeply what the locals think about Bandon Dunes. Are there a lot of high rolling, expensive uh, golfers in Coos Bay or Bandon or in Coos County? The answer to that unfortunately is no, but he doesn't care. He wants the community to know that he supports them. So whether that's through an ad in the high school yearbook 
or sponsoring the Rotary Club or the Tourism Board that is promoting a bunch of stuff that is really in a different category from Dan and Dunes, it doesn't really matter to Mr. Kaiser. He is really intentional about supporting your local community. And I think like when I grew up at, in Portland, I, I worked at East Portland, as Donald said, and one of the things that the, um, the management staff there was really big on is supporting like local high schools, like my high school. I, I mean, I was 16 or whatever when I remember thinking this, that like they really cared about our golf team and seeing us do well and they rooted for us and asked how our matches went. And like my mom and dad would hear that and think like, wow, East Moreland Golf Course is a cool place. And these people care about the local community and word of mouth spreads. And so my mom probably told her friends and maybe her friends told her kids that, hey, you should go play golf. And so viral marketing can help and, and having a positive um, presence, having a positive presence from a, a word of mouth standpoint can be really beneficial. And it doesn't really cost a lot. So that's another thing that is really important. And then someone mentioned through your staff, marketing through your staff. That is great. I'm glad that came up. And that's something that we care a lot about. And what we do is, once again, it goes back to word of mouth. And that's really an impactful marketing tool. And I think that if you can get your staff all on the same page, speaking the same language, and I'll get into it more with guest services, but if you can get them thinking about who you are, uh, what your goals are, looking people in the eye, and, and being a really positive reflection of your business, that can be marketing and advertising for you right there. And you didn't even really pay for it other than the salary you're paying him, uh, him or her to just do their job, right? So I think that media, or I'm sorry, tra through staff is really good. Uh, local PR, I kind of talked about it uh, already. Website. Websites are really important, obviously, right? Um, as Facebook and Twitter get bigger, websites are still really important. And the good thing about a website is you can set it and forget it a little bit more than Facebook and Twitter. You can build a website that looks good, that has a presence, and then you can go back to your regular business and focus on that while people, while, while traffic funnels through your website. Now, with that being said, if it's not a good website and you don't do anything about it, well, that's like a digital version of walking in your in your golf course, basically. If someone walked in your uh, the front door of, of, of your clubhouse and it was messy and I, when I, I didn't really know where to go when I got there and it was kind of confusing why I was even in there, that would be really, really bad, I would think, if, that, if they walked into your clubhouse. So imagine if they walked into a digital version of your clubhouse, which is basically your website. If they don't really know what to click or that picture looks kind of wonky or it's not really that impressive, Maybe I'm gonna kick out and go to the course right down the street digitally, so like another golf course website. So having a good website presence is, is very, very important. So I'm glad that came up as well. I think that pretty much covered everything on the list. Does anyone have any anything else or any questions to add about what we do for PR and marketing? Yeah. Um, question about uh, Facebook. Yeah. And, um, Twitter, uh, over, like, the overuse of it. Yeah. Just sometimes you look at, your phone or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's bombarding you Absolutely. every two seconds. I feel that way every day, just with my friends. It's like, okay, I saw your baby daughter last week, and now there's 58 more photos. <laughs> but is that kind of what you're saying? Like, yeah. just a lot of information? Just constant. Yeah. At some point in time, you just, you know, I, I have to have another full day of every day to keep up with all of that Yeah. How do you keep up with, with Facebook? I think that's a great question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great question. How do you keep up with Facebook? Because it can be a lot. My recommendation of what we do is to set a goal of how much time you can spend on it. So maybe it's, I want to spend two hours a week making sure my Facebook uh, and Twitter, if you're on it, presence are what they need to be. Okay? And don't go over that. If, if you get going chasing rabbits and, and all of a sudden you've spent four hours in a given week, well, you can't do that every week, maybe. So if you can set a goal of how much time you have to dedicate to it, I think that can help a lot. The other thing is don't post something on Facebook because it's Tuesday and that's your post day. Post something because you've set a schedule of posts if you want, or if something comes up, like there's a beautiful sunset outside the clubhouse and you can go out and snap a photo of it real quick and share it right then and there. Do it because of that. Don't do it just because you need to post on Facebook. Post because you feel like you have something interesting to say. That's what we do. Yeah. Right here? I'm just wondering, are your emails more personalized to the, your guests? Or? They, they don't, no, it, it, it won't say, dear Mr. Peterson. It's a, it's a, uh, a more kind of broad branding type of message. 
Our goal though is for that, whatever is within that email, and this really speaks to Facebook as well. Whatever we communicate, we want the first question that I ask, whether it's of our ad agency or of my, my social media manager, is how, what percent of people who see this are gonna think, wow, that's cool. And if, it's like, if the answer to that is like 99%, gosh darn it, send it now. But if the answer is like, well, I don't know, 50-50, or if it's really geared toward men only, or women only, or the only people in Oregon, maybe only like 30, 40, 50% of people are gonna resonate with that, and so I think it kind of loses its luster that way. Yeah? We do it, like at the Portland Golf Show, we'll collect email addresses that way. Um, but other than that, there really isn't. And actually, when I first started, I asked that same question, like what do we do to grow our email database? And <laughs> I don't know if this is unique to our business or, or if you all ha have heard of this, but we don't want someone's email address that doesn't want us to have it. So in other words, if you're walking down the street and you're giving away sleeves of balls to anyone who gives you their email address, you're probably gonna get some people that really don't wanna give you their email address, but hey, I get a free sleeve of balls, so I guess I'll give it to you. So it, it just makes the quality of that email database a little bit lower. We only want email addresses from people who say, you're cool, it's kinda like dating, like you're cool, I think you're cool, you think I'm cool, let's share information, right? Versus having it be like a forced situation where it's like, I don't really like you, but I kinda want that sleeve of balls, so I guess. <laughs> so we don't really do that, so. Our database probably isn't as big as, as some of our competitors, but we think that our database is as robust as anybody. There's a question over here right, right in front, yeah. Have you set a standard for over posting or too much communication, like how much through Facebook and Twitter? Yeah, good question. So I should be repeating these questions in case you came here, sorry. So his question was, do we set a standard for how many posts we make? It's a good question, and, and the answer is sort of. If there's uh, a week of great weather and we have amazing sunset shots or there's an event in town, like I was talking earlier with Tara about the, the Speed Golf World Championship that was in town, and uh, we'll post more th during weeks like that. But by and large, on average, I would say we post about once a week, one and a half times a week maybe, no, not really any more than that. So it's important, I think, to do that. And that goes back to how much time do you have to, to, to be a part of this? I think that's a good question to ask yourself. Um, because you don't want to overpost. So about one and a half is here. Any other questions? Yeah. Do you find with, with the things changing and everything is changing and information is changing, do you find that the consumer wants everything yesterday and it's a little bit daunting to keep up with that? Yeah. So the question is with the, the rate at which people consume information and how quickly things happen, do we feel like when we send out information, people wanted it yesterday? Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good question and it's something that we can't really change and so we don't worry about it. And so uh, we view the internet as a tidal wave and we just put a surfboard out in the water and ride the wave. We don't try to say like, okay, let's try to block that and not pretend that that's out there. We know the internet is there, we can't change it. We know that people want information yesterday. That's just kind of the way society is now. And so we just keep messages a little bit more general. So it's not like, um, we don't, we try not to be too timely with things about like, you need to act within the next 20 minutes or something. We just do more branding, kind of high arching messages out there about who we are, um, nice photos, things like that. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, sir. So you're going through a, web, a website Redesign, yeah. Um, if you come through the process of trying to prioritize what you're trying to do with your website, if so, what do you prioritize? Yeah, so, so his question was about what we're doing for, with our new website and, and how we're strategizing for that. So the answer to your question of have we thought about what we need to do to, to make sure we're putting the right info, is that kind of what you're, where you're going with that? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know, I don't know if you're, like, some people would maybe say, you know what, people want our rates, that's what they really want yeah. to make that. Sensor, yeah. Say, you know what, I'm bury that. Yeah. Uh, I totally. So uh, we track our current traffic through Google Analytics, and so uh, it's a very inexpensive, simple way um, to, to to monitor the traffic and what people click on within your site. And I think that once again, the internet that one of the big benefits is that it's so measurable. You know exactly how many people clicked on the tea times page of your website. The 
uh, reservations page, the hours of operations page, whatever pages you have, Google Analytics or whatever you can use to track the web traffic to your website, it'll tell you exactly how many people. So if you're gonna redesign your website and you know that 55% of people who visit your homepage immediately go to the Tea Times page, you know that's a probably a pretty important thing to make sure that you're doing a nice job of delivering the next time around. And so what, what does that mean? Is that a bigger Tea Times button? Is that uh, more Tea Times buttons? Like, uh, like maybe the Tea Times button is on every page. There's maybe several different things that you can do, but I think that being cognizant of what are, what are people currently responding to on my current site? And using that to sort of frame your new site, that's something that we've thought about. Yeah, definitely. Any other questions about? Yep. Uh, in terms of your e-blasts, you mentioned you have a, a captive audience, people that have chosen to receive messages. What, what's a good click-through rate? Like, what do you look for? Do you measure that? I assume you do. What do you look for? Um, our click-through rates vary depending on what it is. If, if um, if we're doing an e-blast for like our 2014 event series was the e-blast we sent in January, and that has a very specific call to action. Sign up for a tournament. We've got some coming up. Call this number to do it. I mean, that's pretty, it, it's pretty specific about what, what we want you to kind of go, where, where we want you to go from this e-blast. Um, so click-through rates and um, the, the ROI we get from that is, is a, usually a little bit higher percentage. Uh, we actually don't have tea times bookable online. Um, I mean, the, the reason is because everyone who stays, there's a logic component connected to it, so that puts us in a little bit of a different situation than a lot of golf operators. Um, so we don't, we can't like click through conversion for an e-blast of, like I would imagine maybe a message you'd want to send out is like a Father's Day special for tea times this weekend, fathers play for $10 off if you bring your son or something. And then click here to book a tea time. You can track the conversion of how many people clicked on that. We don't, we don't do that. You have to call a phone number. We track how many people, how many calls our reservations team gets, but um, we, don't, we don't generally track it down to the needle of like exactly how many people are clicking through. So it's not as important to us exactly how many people are clicking through because sometimes it's not a click, it's a call. Whereas some of your, the, the things that you might want to promote, maybe it is a click through. You can measure it uh, more easily if there is a click through, but for us there isn't, for a lot of stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. Anything else? Wave it in the back. Yeah, what a great question. Are you my boss? No. Um, one of the ways that uh, we support our local community, and, and really this extends beyond just geographically our community, but our community of, of PGA professionals throughout North America, is we run a special through, um, we call it the off season, but it, there's really not anymore any off season. There, we're at, 84% capacity when I left on Friday and it was raining sideways. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. But anyways, um, during that off season, so basically right now, we promote packages to PGA professionals so that if you bring 11 people, your trip from a golf and lodging standpoint uh, is taken care of. And those reservations are handled through our reservations department. If you have specific questions about when to come, how much it costs, what the, what the, uh, the parameters are to that, I'm happy to put you in touch with our reservations team because they can speak to that much better than I can. But while we're on that topic, can I get a show of hands of people who have visited Dan and Dunes kind of with, with a, a group outing kind of thing, through a PGA kind of thing? Okay. So quite a few people. So you, you can maybe learn from the folks who just raised their hand. You can ask me for the people to talk to about what, we, um, what information we have about that, the specifics, because that's a great way to have your, have your trip be paid for, number one. I mean, these aren't in no particular order. But number two, uh, to bring a group of, of, your, of your customers, potentially, or your friends, to kind of bring a community of people down to Bandon Dunes. Bandon Dunes is not a place you want to go by yourself. Uh, we don't get a lot of um, even couples that come, just two people. We, well, we do, and I'm not saying we don't want those types of people, but the predominant part of our business is groups of eight to 12 to 16, like buddies trips, uh, guys and gals, ladies trips, like whatever it is, it's usually in groups. So, uh, so promoting that type of group and type of outing to PGA pros is something that, that we do. Anything else? This is a great discussion. Thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. Returning. 
We don't necessarily have anything that, that speaks to people who have been to Band of Dunes before, because that goes back to what if you get that email and you haven't been there before? I mean, we could send it only to people who have, who have been to Band of Dunes before, but basically all the email addresses we have are people who have been to Band of Dunes. There's a few, a small percentage of people who haven't, but most of the people who, who ha we have their email address are people who have been to Band of Dunes before. So, but we don't say, hey, we know you've been here, so come back for these reasons. We just kind of keep it simple, high level. This is who we are, and this is why we think you, you should visit us, whether you've been here zero times or a hundred times. I've only been with the company for just under a year. So, um, in terms of like how important marketing is to us as our business gets bigger, it's always important. I mean, my belief is that if you don't feel you need to do any advertising, you're not charging enough. <laughs> Raise the prices and then advertise more. Um, and that's not something that we've necessarily done at Bandy Dunes, but as we get bigger, as more people know about who we are, that doesn't shift our focus away from marketing and advertising because it's still important to build that presence within the marketplace. So. Yes, uh, Al. Golf now and the Golf Channel booking. You guys participate? We don't, no. We, the, it's not a la carte. You can't just come to Bandon Dunes and, and play golf. I mean, you, there's a lodging component to it. A lot of people make uh, dining reservations with it, and so we we don't even do online reservations of any kind. So it's not really anything against Golf Now or somebody else that, that, that competes in that space. It's really just about, we don't think that our product can really go online because we need people to call and say, oh my gosh, I just saw, I've heard some recordings and conversations, I just saw your ad in Golf Digest and I need to come. Okay, well that's a conversation. So when do you want to come? How many people want to come? Do you want to have dinner while you're here at McKee's Pub or Pacific Grill or do you need transportation from the airport? There's so many questions that it's not as simple as a 12 o'clock this Saturday, four people playing golf, boom, done, let's go. So that's why we don't really do online reservations at all. Yeah. I think it's such a unique property. How do you look to as your editor to make sure that you're Everyone in this room. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, his question is who are our competitors? Um, our competitors are, from a golf perspective, Pebble Beach, Pinehurst, Kiowa, Whistling Straits are the ones that we think the most about. But my group doesn't think as much about our competitors. We spend more time thinking about our customers. And so, in other words, I don't trust that Pinehurst is, is perfect at marketing. So if I just kind of followed what they do, and if I notice, hey, Pinehurst is promoting this package, why don't we do that? We shift it and go, what would our customer think if they, if they saw that message? And so we spend more time thinking about our customer than our competitor. Now, we're friends with our, our competitors, as I'm sure you all are in this room too. And so um, we have a lot of great conversations about, hey, I noticed you're doing this on Facebook and that's really cool and it starts a dialogue conversation and it goes back to, I think, the notion of a rising tide raises all boats. So if Pinehurst can get better and, and making golf trips, uh, the idea of making a golf trip gets better, maybe Bannon will benefit from that. So I think that people who try to do only what their competitor does, um, maybe aren't thinking enough about, well, what does our, what, what our customer want? Yeah? With all these being said, is your strongest PR component still the guest that you abandoned and tells all Absolutely, that? yeah. So his question was, is, is, your, um, is, your, is your friend, the, 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 the message that your customers spread to their friends when they leave the property. Word of mouth is huge. Um, I think that viral marketing is something that can spread rapidly and can have a huge, enormous impact, so like Facebook and Twitter, but word of mouth is also part of viral marketing. And I think that if you have a customer that walks away and says, wow, that was cool, and he tells one friend, that simple message, wow, that's cool, he tells one friend and then that friend tells one friend and all of a sudden it spreads like wildfire that Band and Dunes is really cool. My gosh, that didn't cost you a dime. All you had to do is treat that guest who was on property with a lot of class and, and treat them really well and all of a sudden they're telling 100 people. That's, that's enormously important. And it doesn't cost anything. You just have to make sure you deliver a good product. Yeah, last question then we'll move on. Uh, we, do, uh, we bite, I don't know the answer to that though. 
I don't. I'm sorry. Do you do many on a Um, not that I know of. That much, those questions are probably better for our director of golf. Um, but we don't we don't actively promote in either of those things. Okay. Thank you. That was awesome. That went a lot longer than I thought. And so I'm on a tight timeline, right? I want to make sure that I'm not going over the board. Let me just buzz through real quick if it's okay what we do. Donald, is that okay? Five more minutes? Okay. So let me just buzz through guest services real quick because this is also really, really important. So everything we've just talked about is setting that expectation. What do you get when you visit your property? So that's through advertising, through word of mouth. Um, that public perception of who you are is really, really important. But then what happens when they show up and they arrive on property? Through At Band and Dunes, that's done through our guest services department. The first thing, kind of going back to our slides earlier, is they need to create a culture of service. So remember, this is a service industry. We're not like in a back room building widgets and the customers never see us. Almost all of our employees, and I would imagine the same for your business, are customer-facing individuals. And so you have to remember that you're in the service industry. Something that I was incredibly impressed with at Man and Dunes when I first started that was surprising was that every person's role mattered. When I listened to our general manager speak to the housekeeping team about how important their job is to our business and our success, I was so blown away by how important he made an assistant, I think she was an 18-year-old girl that was worked on the housekeeping staff. Like he made, not her individually, but he made everyone in the room who fit her job title feel like they were just as important as our leadership team to our success. And so making sure that everyone's role matters is important. And then retention is huge as well. So if you can create people who want to come work for you year in and year out, creates more, more familiarity, they're happier, you like them, they like you, your customers are more familiar with them, it can be big. The second is a training program. It's really important from our guest services department standpoint that everyone knows exactly what they're asked to do. Learn as you go is like a joke. We don't, we don't, we say that learn as you go is basically you saying you don't have enough time to properly train someone. Just, well, learn as you go. Well, that's important, but maybe that's not the end all. The last thing that our guest services department focus on to, focuses on to exceed that expectation when people arrive is through our guest feedback system. And this, do, raise a show of hands of people who have a guest feedback system. If I want to tell you what I think about your business after I've played your course, how many people have that capability? Okay, a few show of hands, probably more, um, more than some areas, but you could have a lot more. So guests like, and I would imagine you feel this way about as a consumer for any product, if someone from a business, let's say you buy a laptop at the Apple store, if someone asks you a week after you have it, if they call you personally or contact you via email, in a personal way and say, how do, do you love your laptop? You'd probably be like, wow, that's cool. They not only know that I have it, but they care about what I think about it. Well, if you can do that from a guest perspective, once they leave to go back to like making sure that they're gonna say that this place was awesome, if you can say, what did you think about us? That can be really helpful. Employees get recognized all the time. Our, our, one of our greeters, Shu Gasper, if you've heard of Shu, he's been there from day one. He is the most complimented guest that we have on property. People, every time someone um, comments on us, we get a feedback. We get feedback of people saying that Shu did a great job. So employees, departments can be recognized. And I think this is the most important. You'll learn what you need to do better. Maybe someone says, you know what, the uh, conditions weren't as good, or the driving range could be bigger. It, granted, I'm not saying that you want to encourage neg negative things, but maybe you'll, maybe you'll say something that you didn't realize, like, you know what we could have five more driving stations at the driving range and maybe we have room to do it or something. I don't know, maybe a light bulb will go on. You might learn something. This is hard to see, but this is what our guest feedback system looks like. We send an email and we ask every guest who visits, every single guest gets an email from us. You've gotten this email saying, tell us how we did. And we rank the different elements of our business. So reservation services, front desk, accommodations, golf shop service, and then each of the courses, Bandon Dunes, Pacific, Bandon Trails, Old Mac, Bandon Preserve, and then into food and beverage service, food and beverage quality, housekeeping, transportation, overall staff. Rate each of those things on a scale of one to 10, and then tell us down here kind of some more questions like, how did you hear Bandon Dunes? What did you like best about the resort? The answer to this question cracks me up. What did you like best about the resort? Tough question. The quality of golf and the fact that my wife doesn't want to come with me because there's nothing to do for her than play golf. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I didn't say it. But. Okay, was there anything we could do to improve upon? Great question. I'm not saying let's make it negative once again, but 
gosh, tell me what we can do to be better. Uh, this person said, iPod docking stations in the rooms rather than 10-year-old CD alarms. I mean, that's a good point. Maybe we'll do that. I think that's huge. Uh, was there a staff member deserving a particular mention during your visit? Who and why? Everyone was fantastic is what this person said. Uh, additional comments. So this is what we do. Every person who visits Band and Dunes gets this email, and we make sure that we ask them and we're very genuine about uh, what they thought. Did we exceed their expectation, I think, is really what this question is asking. And maybe if we didn't, we can learn what we could do to be better. Is there a certain point in the scale that you get back to that person? That's a good question. So if they if they give us a four or a five or whatever we define, does it automatically trip us and say, hey, you need to reach out to this person because there's a, there's an issue? It, there's no automatic, but we go through each department head. So I go even though maybe all this isn't about PR and marketing, I still have to go and look at it. And if I see something that I know that my department could make better, I'll reach out to that person individually. So we just handle it kind of on a as is basis. 1101. So that's it. That's all I got. If anyone has any questions, I'll be here until lunch. Maybe we can chat. Um, I was telling Donald as I was driving up, I was thinking of, do I have my laptop? Do I have my shoes? Do I have all that stuff? And I had everything except I forgot business cards. <laughs> so Donald has my info. If you all have a question about something that uh, you think of later or down the road or something having to do with like packages or anything uh, to bring a group of people down, happy to answer those questions. So. That's about all I got. Thanks for your time today, folks. Great to be here. That's awesome. Thanks, Eric. That yeah. was uh, very enlightening, and I saw a lot of notes. So uh, very informative. If I could just uh, get you to stand here. Uh, on behalf of the PEABC, we do have a, a little bit of a thank you uh, for you to... He actually drove. I offered to fly Eric up, and... He, uh, he, drove, he chose the driving route in, in that tornado. Um, so for your efforts, uh, we, uh, the association wanted to, uh, to give you uh, a pair of Maui gym sunglasses of your choice uh, from our sponsors. So cool. thank you very much for coming up and, and speaking for us. Appreciate it. Michelle at the Cottonwood Golf Course uh, to come up and give their presentation uh, preparing for your next step in the golf industry.